welcome back in. to Do It for the Story. Oh, the cliffhanger. Do it. I'm Stacy. I'm Morgan. Welcome back in. Welcome back in. We are. Cheers, by the way. And cheers, by the way, to us. To us. And to Lois Lipman. To Lois Lipman. This let's, episode is for you, Lois. Yeah, let's. Since I didn't talk to Lois, I'll get into it and I'll play interview yeah. right now. Love it. And I wish, I well, I should say, I did talk to Lois, met her at the festival. I didn't get to interview yeah. Lois. Yes, you didn't get to interview her. Um, was very bummed about that. But and we should say, when whenever you all hear us say the festival, I, we think by now you know we're talking about the Annapolis Film Festival. But for those AFS, that are listening baby. for the first time, the Annapolis, we met Lois Lippman, the filmmaker at the Annapolis AKA Film Festival. AKA the new Sundance. The new Sundance, yep. Mm-hmm. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Uh, so we did another episode a couple weeks ago about the Annapolis Film Festival, and we had on, um, we spoke about the film Chum, and we talked about why we, you know, selected that and to talk to Eliza. And today, just about the experience. Just about the experience. In general. So today we'll, we'll spare you about the experience because you Go already know about it. Go back and listen. Go back and listen if you haven't, and do... Keep your calendars marked, and we'll share it for next year when they're coming back into town, mm-hmm. the festival. But so today's episode, really important uh, film, but it was a documentary that Morgan got to sit down with the director, Lois Lipman, to chat about the documentary, learn about it, but also learn how we can help. So with that, you'll hear in the next part of the this podcast, that interview with Morgan and Lois, which is really powerful. Uh, but just to give you a little synopsis of what we're getting into. So Morgan, tell us who is Lois Lipman and can you tell us a little bit more about her documentary, First We Bombed New Mexico? Yes, would be happy to. Um, okay, so Lois Lipman um, is an incredible filmmaker, director, documentarian, um, with a 30 plus year career and she's won Emmys and P a P body or P bodies. I'm not sure if it's multiple. Um, and she was at the Annapolis film festival for the promotion of her film and documentary. First we bombed New Mexico and that film is about the tragic bombing um, in Trinity, which is a location in New, Mex- in New Mexico. It was the story behind Oppenheimer, so it's really the story that that film doesn't tell, um, where mm. if you're not familiar, you see Oppenheimer um, is this genius who creates, um, they, they that story is telling the, uh, development of the nuclear bomb and leading up to then, um, you know, the bombing of in World War II of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And, but what, you know, we all know that story, mm-hmm. right? But the story that we don't know is that that bomb was first tested on U.S. soil. It was tested in the United mm-hmm. States. And that location was in New Mexico, in Trinity. And when, and you'll you'll see in the documentary, and and I say that because you have the opportunity, um, May 17th, 18th, and 19th, there's a platform called Show and Tell that a lot of indie filmmakers can use to promote their films, to get, or if it's a film like this, that of course they want it to get picked up and, you know, a lot of energy and bills and time, you know, go into this money needs to come in as well, you know, so they can use it to get picked up. But also there's films like this that also have something behind them that needs to be told. And so this, this story is of what they're called is downwinders. And it's the people living literally downwind of where this bomb was. And really it's anywhere, you know, within the radius and, and truly we're all downwinders because once this bomb is so massive that, you know, once it gets into the soil and the water system, you know, you can see the impact across mm-hmm. all of the United States. And they even show like in the, in the film, they even show a, a 
a visual of the map of the U.S. and all of its impact. But they, the big reason behind, you know, not only telling of the story, but of the importance of the film is that there was a, um, the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act that was passed, I forget when it must, I think it was in the 90s, early 2000s. And if I recall correctly from the film, First We Bomb New Mexico, um, it was a big push by an attorney in Utah. Utah was also impacted. And so this bill was passed. And so what they do is just what it says, the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act. These individuals that had proof that they were exposed and lived in an area, um, you know, near the exposure could then get compensation because what you would what you will see in the film is that many of these individuals get cancer. There were, you know, when it was initially detonated, you know, you had babies, newborns that died. You had, you know, babies that were in utero being born with only like, you know, without an arm. There was all of these, just the statistics. And I've been, and now, you know, because Stacy and I, um, after meeting Lois, are now doing whatever we can to help promote and bring, um, you know, attention to the need for the extension of this act, because, well, first off, it, the act did not include New Mexico, and there's also an end to the act, so it's not like forever people can continue to say, like, hey, I was there and can get money, so it needs to be extended, it's uh, due, you know, to sunset in early June, and so the hope is that with the attention from this film as well as organizations like winwithoutwar.org that have, and we'll show all, share all of this in the show notes, but winwithoutwar.org has um, a petition that you can, takes two seconds, you can go and sign um, because it's these different organizations like Lois and one of the stars of the film who's a huge activist, Tina, they're just doing all they can to get the attention of folks to put pressure on your local politician Mm -hmm. to say, hey, we want Speaker Johnson to take this to the floor. So the Senate has passed a bill to extend um, RECA. And now, like I said, it's it's headed, you know, to, you know, the House of Representatives. And the hope is that Speaker Johnson will take it to the floor and then everyone can vote and there's an extension passed. So this show and tell is really important because we want you all to be connected to impacted by and share it. You know, we want as many people to see this incredible, beautiful film as possible. I was lucky enough to see it. Um, And we want these people to get compensation. And one of the things I was about to say real quick was just, I am now, um, these are Stacy and I divide duties. um, But one of the things that um, I've now on emails with Tina and Lois and some other Um, people that have been impacted by Mm, this this and what I want folks to understand is this is not you know this is not just oh you know this bomb was detonated in the 40s so you know this impacted those people living then and then maybe you know the next generation afterwards no there are still like all the time you have kids 20 somethings that are getting cancer that grew up and lived in this area Um, But also you have to think of the fact that these people and many of them were indigenous living in this area. They didn't have jobs that were providing health insurance, so they've lost their jobs. But also they're actively still, all these people are still getting cancer. So I'm seeing these emails. Well, that's what I was going to say without, could you like high level share what her day was like? Yeah. In the email that the one day when you had... You reached out recently after the festival. Yeah, to do because we had planning. You in touch, yeah, and she was like, "Thank you for your help." And yeah, and told so, you what her day was like. Yeah, exactly. And so I had just emailed her an update of like some of the networking that I was doing on my her end. Her meaning like, Tina, as Tina, well, yes, featured in the film. Um, and I was emailing Tina and Lois to say like, "Here's an update of some of the networking that I've done," and, um. Tina emailed back and said, 
Morgan, I was having a really rough day today and this, I needed this today. Thank you so much. And what she had said was she then listed off um, the people around her that were dying of cancer, the, the people around her that had recently been diagnosed and someone and that she had heard about just that day. It was all within, it was like my day was, yeah, I left a funeral to go consult someone that just got cancer mm -hmm. to then have to go back. And it just, it, it, it's it, so it's been gut wrenching. And so we really want to do everything that we can, you know, like Stacy said, and like we said in, um, you know, our other release of chum and the release of just our experience at the Annapolis film festival, that was to highlight the film festival, but we're releasing this because we are highlighting First We Bomb New Mexico and Tina Cordova's um, lived experience and the work of Lois because we want to do whatever we can to bring these people some help. And one thing I will say um, that I don't know if you mentioned, but again, that this was, you said that's obviously the title is <laughs> First We Bomb New Mexico, so you know where it is, but this largely impacted the native mm -hmm. and latin communities locally there so again where we have that dim discrimination against the marginalized communities um where can you imagine like put yourself in the shoes can you imagine if if you took out the word first we bombed annapolis maryland you know first we bombed Connecticut. whatever suburb that's predominantly you know think mm -hmm. about it. first we bombed if these headlines were happening right other places other places and it feels very flint-esque you know it's mm -hmm. like there's a lot of why minority, did they pick that location right, right why did they pick that location minority and and that they touch on that in the film too um you know these were folks that when this happened um they did not know that the bomb even went off they thought it was snowing that day and this was a place where indigenous people had lived like people picked to live in this place because there was a uh an, a water access you know this beautiful flowing stream in a in a desert and so then they created the literal perfect storm you know downwinders is so literal for this because in this area of new mexico the wind is just whipping right so you set off a bomb and you do it in a place where the wind has no, you know, mountains to block it or anything. So they completely destroyed this area for it to be what it was, was this beautiful, um, mm -hmm. you know, just, and yeah. But like you're saying it, that for this, this documentary, that's the area they feature, but the Rekha bill overall, it's eligibility to, they're asking also for more eligibility to areas where, yeah. Obviously, yeah, you can think about ge geography where you would want to have, like, a lot of military testing happens in, like, desert areas. But so Utah, Colorado, Montana, Guam. I say all this because you don't know what's happening around you, and these may be in the, some of the states where you live. Yeah. So, so you, yeah, and the, to and you all can go, you know, we're not, we're going to wrap this up in a second, but you'll hear this in my, you know, interview with Lois and then I still encourage you, if you don't have time to see the film, you know, if May 17th, 18th, 19th does not work for you, but I do encourage you to go register at the Show and Tell website, which will be in our show notes, to see the film because it's mind-blowing, you know, to think that we still pay Japan for what we did to them because we know those people suffered greatly and we ruin that land um you know we gave them cancer um and we're not paying our citizens and we're, the fact that and it's not only and you'll see and this in the it. film it's not only that we're not paying it but they actively went out of their way to hide this and so to you know this is this is the true definition of a bipartisan issue yeah you know i i i believe all people and actually there's some amazing Republicans that are behind this because, you know, this is, this is the heart of what I think any politician, you know, you, 
you realize that you're supposed to be fighting for the people and you're not supposed to let government be too powerful. Right. Um, and it is for the people and by the people. And this is that example where yeah. you've taken advantage of us. And, yeah. And so yeah. if you are hearing what Morgan just said too, it's like, even if you're not a politician, do the involvement, the strength in numbers and do, as far as taking action, there are ways you can take action without being a huge commitment. Yep. We're not asking you to, you know, go volunteer to no. be, get the word out. Um, so like Morgan said, the, the show and tell May 17th through May 18th through 19th at watch.showandtell.film. Um, you can go there and we'll have it in the show notes where you can register to watch it. And then there's a petition, right? Yep. You can sign the petition. Um, winwithoutwar.org is an awesome organization that I actually just became aware of. Thank you, Copilot. Um, mm-hmm. And so now I'm in touch with one of their executives. Um, and we're going to have a meeting this week uh, to just see, you know, how our powers combine. But on that, on their site, winwithoutwar.org, you'll see it. It's right there. Um, you know, just their act now. I think it's like one of their tabs. It's Mm -hmm. obvious. Um, and you sign that petition. It's a typical, takes two seconds, name, email, location. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you also, of course, if you can donate to the film, you know, these, a lot of these indie films like this that are made, especially with a passion to make a difference, they're desperate for money to like keep going. Um, right. And keep going, not just like the film was out there, but to get the film played in areas yep. and get the attention and the, you know, advertising, all of yep. it. Takes because a it's lot. also, it's, it's, it's yes for this moment. You know, we want, we want and hope that there is an extension that's passed, you know, before the sunset in June, but it's also the awareness of like, these are things that are happening and, you know, I hate to say it, but it gives you power to feel, um, you feel more empowered to question things that you are like, wait, what? Or that doesn't make sense to me. Or I, you know, feel empowered. There's, I cannot believe I was blown away by this film. Yeah. Because again, it's another world. No, I was just saying world war two. We have been taught about world war two since first grade. And we have heard over and over again, all the good that the United States did to, fight the Nazis and you know it was horrible that we had to use this bomb but end this war and the fact that it has been hidden for decades Mm -hmm. you know just tells you we got to open our eyes you have to ask questions ask questions do your own research do your own decisions and um treat others as how they would they but you would want to be treated in this in this scenario so yeah. like yeah and these people are begging for our help it's and they just need a it. name it's just an email at a minimum sign the petition it'll take you all 30 seconds yeah. um but yeah so we'll include all that in the show notes but yeah thank you all thank, thank you for you your all. support thank you lois please and please thank really you, do share this um episode we'll have everything in the show notes that you need to watch the upcoming film to sign the petition. Like, please share this far and and wide. We're going to be, I'm going to be putting some stuff up on my LinkedIn too. We need, um, you know, attention on this film and we need to be promoting and supporting filmmakers like Lois Lippman that are doing the good work. So, yep. Thanks all. Appreciate you. Divas. 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 going to have this show and tell the date will be announced and so for a 72 hour window anybody they have to register and then anybody can see the film and then they have to look at the panel discussion and as uh congresswoman teresa leche fernandez said our new mexico congresswoman in an interview uh, that in one of the papers she said we need to lock all the congress people in a room and make them watch the film and if they do that we will pass rico yeah so that's what they're trying to do. And so it literally is just actually getting it in the hands of those folks. I mean, how hard is that, though? Like, how hard is it to, I mean, you're saying literally get them in a room doesn't seem that difficult. But, like, here we are. These people have been fighting for, you know, <laughs> decades upon decades. Do you have hope that, like, they're actually going to sit down and watch the film? Do you feel like you have the connections? Like, what can the public do 
you know, from like a grassroots perspective, um, you know, are we talking about, do we need the papers to be writing about this? Like, what can we do to help? Because that's like my reaction is how can we get the word out? So thank you. Yeah. So the public, all the viewers need to um, contact, call, and I wish I had the number. I, 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 I can look it up, the number. Okay, but, um they need to leave a message for Speaker Mike Johnson, okay. um, either an email or a telephone call, to expand RECA or to include New Mexico in the legislation, the yep. nuclear legislation. It's called S Senate Bill S3853 um, to vote for that. Okay. And, and also what they need to do is contact their congressional legislators. Okay and inform them and get them to be on board with this and include any of their friends. Because you asked a smart question, a good question, which was like, how do you influence the people that need to be influenced? Right. And it's very hard in right. this very um, adversarial uh, Congress, right? Uh, so the thought is, Firstly, Josh Hawley, who is a Republican, and he's not everybody's favorite friend, right? Mm -hmm. But um, he has been fiercely mm. in favor of this. And so it's only because Josh Hawley that Republic, this huge mass of Republican legislators have come on board. And he, is he Missouri? Am I he's Mo the film? He's, okay. Yeah, and what happened was he learned last summer that um, that there was also secret nuclear Manhattan Project work outside of St. Louis. And they just dumped the radiation there, and it's gone through the soil. It's gone into Coldwater Creek, and all these children have died of leukemia. And so he's fiercely mm. now suddenly speaking like a bulldog for it mm. and bringing on board. Now, the way it may, I mean, he's... He's been very strategically clever. Um, because we've always had, I mean, our whole state is in support of it. Mm -hmm. But just having Democratic support is not enough. No. No. But um, so he, I believe it's he, it hasn't been publicly announced who it is. But um, this expanded RECA would not only include New Mexico and the uranium miners who've been ignored, but He's identified, or somebody has identified, area codes in scattered Republican states mm. where they also dumped radiation and people have died. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly you're getting buy-in, I believe, from places like Kentucky mm. and um, Missouri and a lot of red states because everybody gets cancer when you're radiated. And um, this has been a strategically brilliant way to win uh, the vote, the Republican vote that's needed to carry this. And then the other strategy of the show and tell is that if people watch the film, then they will encourage their legislators to vote for RECA. And if they're in states where we need to flip, where they need to flip legislators, that's an effective tool. Also, uh, our senator, I understand, wants to have a, a screening on Capitol Hill. Mm. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I have a couple questions, so, um, and thoughts as well. It's, it's, super, it's interesting that you bring up Josh Hawley. Um, yeah. Because, and, and the fact that he's a Republican. Yeah. Um, I recently read a book uh, called First, uh, what is it? First Wives, or First Ladies, First Ladies, excuse me. Um, and it's about Eleanor Roosevelt yeah. and her relationship with Mary Bethune, um, oh. who is. Uh, or was a civil rights activist. Um, and so interesting that, and the, the book is you know fictional, but it's based upon their relationship. And it speaks heavily to the fact that Mary was so involved in black voters becoming Republican, or excuse me, Democratic voters. They'd previously been Republican. And it just made me think as I'm reading this book that there's such an emphasis on like the line in the sand. You know, like, well, how could I have that conversation with that Republican who was talking right. about this, this, and this, right. when, you know, that's, and the point of mine and my sister's podcast, Do It For The Story, is 
connecting with people through their stories, not right. talking at people, not saying, right. this is what you need to know, this is what you should believe, but understanding, well, why do you believe what you believe? Right. Because clearly with someone like Josh, when he understands the information, the Democrat versus Republican doesn't really matter. No. And so in this issue, um, it sounds like obviously you already have some, of course, Republican support. Yes. But do you feel like it is completely split, split down the middle? Do you feel like that's a, how how much of an issue for those of us that aren't really behind the scenes like you are with politics? Is that really that you know bipartisan, you know, differing opinions? Is that really? I'm not going to get in that room because it's Josh that's you know standing up for this. Is that something that you're really concerned about? Um, we're just grateful that he's standing up for mm -hmm. it. And he's been such a champion of it. And um, there always were Republicans, like um, Senator Crapo is Republican. He's had, I believe he's had cancer. Mm -hmm. And his state has had radiation fallout. Mm -hmm. So, um, and really the legislators that I know who are authoring it, they don't necessarily talk about it. They've all been victims of um, lab fallout and radiation. Mm. And when it is in your back door or affects your family, mm -hmm. suddenly it matters a lot. So um, it's not a Democrat or Republican issue. I th but of course, Republicans are much more fiscally conservative, they're not motivated as much by human justice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of people who need, who've been unfairly treated, unless their own family or it's in their back mm -hmm. uh, door. Mm -hmm. And that's what is happening right mm -hmm. now. That's the buy-in of uh, identifying zones in all these Republican states that have been radiated. And so these people have died too. Mm. And they and it's all nobody. None of this has been acknowledged. Mm. I mean, the the film was just so. I mean, my jaw was literally on the floor the whole time. That Thank you. you know, it's the the cover up of it all. Yeah. And I thought it was so interesting when you started the conversation with the um, Japanese. Were they filmmakers or were they NHK? It's uh, okay. like Japanese public TV. Okay. Okay. And I thought it was so powerful when they were blown away by the fact that it was hidden here. They're like, I mean, we've been getting money from the U.S. government. Yeah. You know, there's been a huge, um, you know, they, they're, they've they just admitted, you know, we did this thing and like, you know, here's how we're going to make up for it is not the right word, but, you know, right some of the wrong or, right. or at least apologize. Right. And so it's so interesting to me, you know, along the, the same lines of, of the fiscally conservative um, you know, agenda. It's just so interesting to me that like a piece of the short is the being fiscally conservative, right? right? But the other piece is just being unwilling to apologize, being unwilling to admit fault, to admit fault. Because another film that I, I saw this weekend, which I don't know if you had the opportunity to, Common Ground. Um, oh, I want to see that. I haven't seen it. Incredible. Another, my jaw was on the floor the whole time. And I'll quickly give you the synopsis. Thank you. So the basis of the film is talking about regenerative agriculture. And so showing that the lobbyists actually, I think they said the statistic was like 80% of lobbyists are connected to agriculture and getting a lot of money from agriculture. Now, you're like, well, why would that even be? Like, what's so expensive about farming? And what's so expensive about farming is because they've taken the traditional, what is regenerative agriculture away and said, um, you know, the, the best way to farm is through pesticides, Chemicals. through tilling and all these things. Monsanto. And then they highlight the fact that the now bear, yes, the, the exactly who you think it is, the, um, that produces, you know, aspirin and, um, quote, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but the medical company bear has now bought um, uh, the chemicals, what was it, Raid or um, uh, Roundup, has has now owns that company. And oh my gosh, what does yes, really? what does Bear also produce? They produce the um, chemotherapy treatments that harm cancer. Now you're thinking here, okay, the lobbyists want the money. They're not worried about humans. Fiscally conservative, but the thing is, when you slow down, and that's what they explain to you in Common Ground, is that regenerative agriculture would save 
our company money, our company, our country money, as well as the farmers. These farmers are making more money by doing regenerative agriculture and they're safer. So the interesting thing is if, if we really hear, my point is the story behind the story, and we're not just sitting in a room with those that we trust and feel most comfortable with, lobbyist, Republican, ag, and you can sit and listen to not only the victims, but like what what my day to day is like, what what how my wallet's being impacted. Um, I think it's would allow us to become closer together, to understand, to reach across the aisle. Um, and so I find it so interesting that the excuses of like fiscally conservative, when at the end of the day, if we were all better towards each other, if we all were able to help and protect one another. Wouldn't that circularity of the protection of each other, like we would see the money being put in our wallets in some other way, right? Because mm -hmm. we have easier food mm -hmm. to access. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. I can mm -hmm. be verbose and go on and on. But my point is, it's just so interesting that these things, it's the constant cover up, which may be hidden behind a certain idea of it mm. wasting money, but yet at the end of the day, it's really not. Mm -hmm. It's being honest mm -hmm. and letting folks know this is what's best for society. Mm -hmm. This is what's best for each other. Correct. Um, so I haven't asked you a question. I've just completely talked at you for a minute. Yeah, but, that's great. Um, it's so interesting because they're in the same boat of just needing like more folks to understand and speak up with Congress. And um, But yeah, so again, I'm talking at you at this point, but that would be someone, honestly, that would be really helpful to connect with as well because oh. there were, yeah, one of the um, the farmers that was part of the panel was like connected to the UN and all these oh. things. So anyway, I really wanted to see that film. I've yeah. heard it's been screened a lot of places and it always gets recognition and yeah. I really would like to see that film. Yeah, but it's among among the same the same vein. But So I should see if I can, yeah. Yeah, you should absolutely see yeah. if you can get in, in touch. But I also, you know, for you making this film and, you know, you've been in the industry for such a long time. Yeah. Um, for you, what was different about this film? I can't imagine that, like, the connection to it was like when I stood up and asked you that question about, um, you know, it's not only that these folks are sick and tired of being sick and tired, but they're also constantly fighting for the fact that they're they're brown people. Yeah. Um, and of course we saw, yeah. you know, the one brain cancer survivor was a white male, but most of the reason that this all occurred was because these yeah. are indigenous folks that we're going to forget about. Yeah. Was that conversation constant? Was it you know, where people, you know, as a black woman, I know what it's like to feel like I have to push certain things down just right. to survive. Are they in that mode or is there like a loud, we weren't included in Rika, you know, in the 90s um, because of our skin. Is that conversation being had, our skin tone? Well, I think, and no one knows for sure, unless somebody really does some deep, I, I've tried, but I haven't gotten to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they were people of color and they're people without a voice. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I just believe that the fact that two of our major nuclear industries, Sandia and Los Alamos, are in New Mexico, mm -hmm. played a big role. Now you could say that, that maybe that's the reason why they put themselves there mm -hmm. and felt that they could be testing stuff mm -hmm. there and get, you know, do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. but. I feel that a, a, the reason, a reason why New Mexico was left out mm -hmm. of any acknowledgement of the devastation and harm that's occurred because of the nuclear industry is in part because the nuclear industry is in New Mexico. They're getting a lot of money. It would look really bad for their... Um, you know, to get money mm. if um, it was also noted that they were, in, in fact, killing people. Mm. You know, people were dying. Right. Now, those people are mostly people of color, mm -hmm. primarily people of color. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the, the color card is very much um, in people's minds at, at this point, everybody's mind. And... You know, we we haven't heard this narrative, the people's narrative. Mm -hmm. We've heard the narrative about Trinity of uh, Oppenheimer and the mm -hmm. great scientists. They're all, of course, white and 
uh, brilliant, or if not privileged, um, and the military might. And what we haven't heard is the voice of the people, the indigenous people who live on that land and how they've been impacted by Trinity. One thing I wanted to mention was that um, you were, we were talking about a way not to see the world in as a bipartisan, mm -hmm. adversarial way. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a big message of the film is that nuclear radiation from testing doesn't end at state borders. Right. We are all downwinders. Yeah. We are all impacted by this. I mean, the goal is to nurture our earth mm -hmm. and our people and our water, right? Mm -hmm. And it's sacred, really. And, um, and that if we are spraying fallout around, it's, we don't know who's getting cancer for what reasons, but, but I'm sure it's related to this. Absolutely. I mean, that was for me in the film when they showed that, that map. map. I just, you know, and and correct me if I'm wrong. Did I hear them say that this was actually worse than Chernobyl? Yes. Did they, I? Yes. I mean, and you yeah. know, I mean, I think many of us have now seen Chernobyl. That was a fantastic film, um, and to see how devastating that was. And it's like, here we are. Let's all talk about that because it doesn't involve the U.S. Right? It doesn't involve the U.S. government. And it's like I said to you the other day when we were catching up, I'm like, if I see one more, again, my husband's a veteran, I respect the military, but if I see one more film about the front lines of World War II, when I want to see the story behind the story, which is this is exactly what it is. And the fact that it took the Annapolis Film Festival in 2024, I'm a 40 year old woman, I have never heard about this story is gut-wrenching and angering and I just, it's eye-opening. And it's to that point where, God, and it makes me think too of Empire Waste, the other film of like, you are never too young to speak up. You're never too young to, you know, find your voice and be brave because how do you even know what you're being told is the truth, let alone, you know, so to have those questions, to be able to sit down and um, you know, be vulnerable with each other, which really brings me to then the Annapolis Film Festival because, so this is the only film festival that I've been to. You know, I've been to, like I said, last year and this year. And I would be really curious your take on other festivals that you've been to because I've just been so overwhelmed by each film. I feel like the, um, the consistency and the, the similarity between all is this, which is also, and I'm not, this is not for the sake of a plug, but like the beginning of Do It For The Story, our podcast, you know, we always say, welcome in, welcome in. And I have felt so welcome in this environment. I have been in corporate America for almost 20 years. The, the job that I have now, this is not my, my day job, um, the job that I have now, this is the first time that I have ever felt like I can use my voice, I can speak up. And I have worked for some of the top companies in in the world and to sit there and think that this showing up only you know with a new a new podcast someone new in this industry to be embraced with open arms i'm curious is that like the world of film and is that or is this this moment is this lee and patty and annapolis and like how is that for you do you does that resonate for you too or am i like alone on an island feeling like no 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 lee and patty are doing something extraordinary here and the other programmers um giving a voice for these films that are so important and they're not going to be seen anywhere else and welcoming you to give a platform mm. for these films i i just think in the warmth that the warmth. i feel the welcome the love, you know, the, I mean, Elise, like trying her damnedest to mm. um, get this message out. See, people will see this film. I, she just said, don't worry, we're doing it all. We're meeting yeah. on Monday, you know? Yeah. I mean, this film festival is extraordinary. I, I feel so, I literally could get emotional because like this is my town and for someone that 
you know, I grew up in a small, you know, all white community wow. and to be here and see so much diversity in like our, my town is diverse. Annapolis is diverse, but to see so much diversity in this film festival behind the scenes, behind the camera, in front of the camera, for everyone to just say, how can I help you? How can you help me? You're an artist, I'm an artist, is so just, God, I wish I wish everyone could experience something like this in their lifetime. And if there was more love, more acceptance, more welcome in in this world, um, I think there'd be more people you know, fighting for you, fighting for Rika, um, and making it a better place. So with that, I can't thank you enough. Like, Lois, what you've done is changing lives. And I hope and pray that June we get the results that we want. And I, I'm putting that I am, I am putting that out there. It's happening. Um, but I also have to say to you, or for you, for Tina and those in the film, for all those brown people and all of those you know marginalized folks that don't have a voice. Thank you, thank you, because you've touched us and you've touched them, and that matters. So thank you. Well. Thank you, because yeah. making a film goes nowhere unless it's written about, unless it's shown um, on film. And, um, and it's been really my life's privilege mm -hmm. and meaning to be able to tell this story, to be, uh, to be so inspired by Tina and these courageous women and Paul Pino and mm. the, the musician mm. and yeah. I, I am so honored to, to be doing this work and thank you so much for getting the film out. Amazing, thank you for doing this. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah.